I'm going to turn my oil on real quick. Get that going. Now, important part of this is your frying pan. If your frying pan is a piece of junk and it's all wavy and not flat, your fry is going to be really tough. Okay, That's an all clad which is the top end frying pan and it will always stay flat and so my fry will be a lot more even. All right. Now we're going back over to the abalone while my grease is heating up there and we're going to cut this abalone. Now I'm not going to cut the whole thing for the sake of time. I'm sure you got better things to do. Okay, so you're going, oh my gosh, look how thick you're cutting it. Oh my gosh, you can't cut it that thick. You won't be able to eat it. You didn't pound each piece. Okay. Now we're cutting those probably, I don't know, I don't want to exaggerate, probably quarter inch. Good piece of abalone, quarter inch thick. Remind you, you're trying to eat for flavor, okay? You don't want a bunch of cracker crumbs and whatnot. Okay, so you just keep on going on that, okay? You see how thick that piece is? Alright. That's what we're doing right there. Alright, so we're going to fry up a couple of those. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to do the cracker crumb, alright? Now, you can use panko or whatever, whatever floats your boat. I use the cracker crumbs because it's cheaper, it's easier for me. And I think it personally tastes better. So you bust up your crackers like that, open up your little thingamadoodle, dump them in here. Okay, you got your crackers, put your lid on. Okay, there's your breadcrumbs, your crackers. I'm gonna put them in the large one. Okay, and you can do more. That won't do all this abalone, but for the sake of the DVD, I don't want to belabor. Okay, so then you take your eggs. Now, I don't put milk or anything in it. I don't need to. When you crack an egg, do hit it on something flat. That way you don't get chips in it. Okay, I learned that from Anthony Bourdain. But I did have a piece fall in. All right, and I'm going to put one more in there. Okay. There you go. Egg. Just gonna beat that up a little bit. Okay, so we're cutting the abalone up. Okay, you gotta have a good sharp knife. Cut it, like I said, about a quarter inch thick. You're like, oh my gosh, you left all the black stuff on it. Okay, the black stuff has most of the flavor. Okay, and it will not hurt you. All right? Um, I actually have people that prefer the ends. We call them the lips, all right? and they are the best part of the abalone. Now, if you can see, it's still got the foot on the bottom. You can eat it with the foot, I prefer not to. So I'm gonna take a real thin slice off the bottom with a nice sharp knife, okay? You don't need to take a bunch off the bottom. All right, there we go. Like I said, just take a real thin part off the bottom. It loosens it up a little bit and um, it's just a habit that I've done, got into. You don't really have to, but you can see how thin that is. Okay, that's the foot part, and that's the inside of the abalone. And let me do one more big old piece here. You notice the way I'm cutting it too? It's a lot easier to cut it this way than it is going the other way. Um, and I'll take one more. All right, there we go. Now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to egg it. Okay? So I dip it in egg, get my cracker crumbs good. I'm gonna dip that, lay that in there. Okay, see it's still got lips on both sides. Okay, it's still got the black on there, that's okay. It's not gonna hurt you. You don't have to skin them. You don't have to rub them to death with a piece of bristle or uh, steel wool. Okay, now when you're putting your cracker crumbs on, you wanna pat them on there, all right? And that way, they don't come off in your grease and your grease doesn't splatter and get all nasty. All right? So there are two of my pieces of abalone, okay? See how thick they are? Now my grease is hot enough. I'm gonna lay them in there, okay? And they're gonna fry and they say, oh, you just fry them for one minute or whatnot. No, you can fry them. You can fry them for 
until the, until the cracker crumbs are golden brown. Okay. I'm gonna do two more pieces here so I got a full plate. Okay, set that over there. Now if you're real good, you got one hand in the egg, the other hand in the cracker crumbs, but I'm trying to hurry because I know you probably don't want to sit here and watch this thing for 30 minutes. Okay, pat the crumbs on there, that's okay. Keep them on there. Shake them off so they don't float around your grease. Lay it in there nice and neat. All right. Now one of the next things is let it fry. Okay, don't be playing with them. What I see a lot of people do is they start poking them and knocking the crust off and what I call mulling them. And just, just leave the abalone fry, okay? If you gotta move it, just shake the whole frying pan like that. It's moving. All right, now, to look at the bottom, I can see on the side how much the bottom's fried. So I don't have to flip it over, all right? And so I'm gonna let that cook. I got the grease up. I don't know how hot it is. I'm gonna turn up a little bit more for the sake of time. Right now, it's also tenderizing, okay? It's softening up the muscle. So when we get done, we're gonna be able to cut it with a plastic fork, and I'm gonna show you how you can test your abalone to tell if you pounded it right. And it won't work. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get it right, okay? So when I take the abalone, I should be able to bend it, and it should snap, okay? If it's not done right, it's gonna bend like a piece of rubber. If it's done right, it'll snap, okay? And that's tender abalone, okay? Remember, those are quarter inch, 3 16 inch thick, too. So it's not these little wafer-thin abalone that I've sat there and pounded for, you know, three hours in a pounding party. You can take your abalone pounder and send it back to the meat guy. Okay, so don't maul them. Just let them fry. Make sure they're bubbling. Do you have it on really, really high or medium? I have it on pretty high right now, but you don't want to burn your grease. The other thing is I'm using pure corn oil, okay? Nothing fancy. Don't use olive oil. I don't like canola. Um, but I mean you can use canola um, but I just use pure pure corn oil and just let them fry okay so we're gonna turn it off for a second and we'll come back as soon as you're fried and I'll tell you about how long it's probably gonna take I don't know three or four minutes for them to fry and then we'll come back and see how they turned out so we've been standing around for a couple minutes we're back if you can see the fork in they're real tender all right and you can see how it's golden brown I have not mauled these things but they are golden brown, okay? And when I get done, this stuff is gonna fall. I can barely turn them because it's so tender, it's gonna fall off my fork. Now, I'm gonna let it cook on that side again. All right, so we're gonna cut the video because it's not real exciting watching abalone fry, and we'll come back to it in just a minute. Okay, so we just took the abalone out. We gave it a few seconds to cool down because I took it out of hot grease, and we wanna see how, how well it was pounded, okay? Now, you see that split? You see how this broke open? That's what you're trying to get. That means your abalone is cooked properly. You can see how thick it is. You can see the crust, nice and crispy. It's got the ends on it. I didn't trim the ends off. Now, you see how that little piece is rubbery there? That means that little piece will be tough. But the rest of that, plastic fork trick, here we go. Cut it with a plastic fork. Look how thick that is, okay? One more time. Cut it with a plastic fork. Cut it with a plastic fork. All right, how much more do I need to say? Cut it with a plastic fork. Look how thick it is. How long did I pound it? Good stuff. Sure. Okay, I want to talk real quick about knives. Um, these are Victor Knox for or Forstner knives. They're made by the same people that make your Swiss Army knife. They're a very good knife. I prefer the black handle. You can get them also in wood. Um, they hold a really good edge. These don't flex, but they're good for cutting abalone. Two different styles, depending on what you like, you can use it for other things. And then also you got a boning knife. It's a shorter knife, it's easier to get the edges off. Um, so Victor Knox, Forstner, um, knives, they'll last you your whole life if you take care of them. 